Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Lily Reads. In today's video, we are going to talk about my most surprising books of the year. These are books that I gave high ratings and I did not expect to. I did not expect these books to be as enjoyable as they were, as what the word surprising means. I enjoyed them. I am happy that I read them. They didn't, some of them didn't quite crop some of them probably could have cracked my best books of the year if I maybe did about 20. Probably these would be my next 20 favorite books of the year or my next 10 favorite books of the year. So let's get right on into it and start with 16 and Pregnant. I found out that MTV Books was going to publish more books. MTV Books used to publish books, I believe, back in the early 2000s and 90s. And they were coming back as an imprint and they were going to publish a book called 16 and Pregnant. And I thought it was going to be silly, but I saw two black girls on the cover and I said, you know what, let me give it a try. So I pre-ordered it, got my hands on it, and I really, really enjoyed it. So in this book, we are following two girls. One of them, they're looking forward to like going off to college. They all, they both, I think, want to go to Howard. But for one of them, they become pregnant. And things start to get a little bit weird because now they don't know what to do. She's trying to keep a secret from her family. The other girl is her best friend and is also trying to keep this secret. But they still want to go off to school with each other. So she's having this conversation. Should she have an abortion? Should she not? And then you have the other friend also dealing with stuff with basketball and other stuff. All young adult things that you deal with. This book is so thoughtfully done. I know a lot of people could see a book called 16 and pregnant with two black girls in the cover and immediately think really like disturbing thoughts but this book is so much more than that this book tells a real story about black girls and what they deal with and how some of them can become pregnant like many people do and how they deserve support and how their friends support them and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel you don't have to walk around with such shame think your life is over I really enjoyed the parents in this book and how they uplifted these girls they weren't mean to these girls and how Everyone kind of rallied around these girls, this idea of community. I thought it was nice to have authentic black girls on the page. This wasn't a book trying to paint black girls in a certain light, good or bad. It was a book just about black girls, about being black, you know, who just so happened one of them happened to be pregnant. I thought this book was thoughtfully done, way more thoughtfully done than I expected it to be. This was a perfectly good, enjoyable book. I enjoyed it. I think a lot more people should pick this book up. And yeah, that is that. The next book would be the most surprising books of the year for me is The Collected Regrets of Clover. I am trying to get my hands on my own copy. This book is from the library. I went to the bookstore yesterday and they didn't have it. So like now I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Like I don't order books off of Amazon. So I'm just like, well, I need, I need to get my hands on a book. None of the bookstores near me have it. So I don't know. We'll see when it comes. Anyways. In this book, we are following Clover. Clover is a death doula. After her grandfather died unexpectedly when she was not home, she was away studying abroad for college, she decided to become a death doula and try to be there for people who do not have people to be there for them when they die at, uh, when they're going to die or they don't have family who's going to be there, stuff like that. So she becomes a death doula. But she realizes very quickly that being a death doula has caused her to be very lonely. She doesn't have any friends. Her her oldest, her best friend is an 87 year old man who lives in the apartment building she lives in. And so she starts going to these death cafes. There's these cafes around New York where people can meet up and discuss death. And she meets this guy named Sebastian and her and Sebastian kick it off. And she becomes the death doula for Sebastian's grandmother. And that kind of starts her on this like trying to live life to the fullest and do all that. This book is so thoughtfully done. What this story really says about like family, I think is what this book is really great at. And like, oh, finding your own people and loneliness and people putting their life to the side to kind of uplift you and how in the end, all you have is community, how we're all going to die and we're all going to have regrets is what you do in that time with those regrets. I enjoyed this book. This book is really well done. It was a late, it was a late entry, but it made it through one of my favorite books of the year and my most surprising book of the year because I picked it up because it was at the library and I was like, I kind of am interested in it. Let's see how it goes. But it was so much more than I thought it would be. 
The next book is by Lisa Allen Augustini, who was in my best books of the year with The Bread the Devil Needs. She comes back to be in my surprising books of the year with Home Home. This is like a novella-ish. It's novella-ish. And we are following a character who used to live in Trinidad, I believe. And she has moved to Canada. And she is upset with moving to Canada because she don't got no friends. She don't got no friends. She don't know nothing. Things are different. And so she's trying to make Canada work for her. And basically this is about her just, you know, trying to find herself. She meets a boy. They make friends. She said, um, she's with her mug auntie. Her auntie has a girlfriend. It's a lot. There's a lot going on in this book. It's all good. It's really, really short, but I think people should pick this up. There's really nothing more to say about this book. That's what this book is about, about a girl who moves to Canada and tries to find her footing. She meets a boy, she meets some people and she decides that maybe she can make Canada a home for herself. The next book that we have in my most surprising books of the year goes to Will by Will Smith. Last year or the year before, I tried to pick this book up and I didn't really get through it because I just put it down. That happens to me all the time. I can name about 20 books that I have not finished this year that I just started reading and put down. It takes a lot actually for a book to become like something I'm like reading continuously because I constantly pick up books, put them down. But this book kept getting picked up, put down. But finally, I made a video about memoirs and I said, I'm gonna read Will by Will Smith. And boy, was this book good. You have different types of memoirs. You have people who tell memoirs about specific moments in their life. Then you have the a memoir like Will Smith where he is just going to take you throughout his entire life. He's going to take you ups, downs, highs, lows. That is what Will Smith does in this book. This book reads like a movie script. This book reads like a movie. Will Smith is just really good at being famous. Will Smith is really good at telling a story. Will Smith has an interesting life. Will Smith has done so much. Will Smith is so important to blackness and black pop culture and that reading this book you just come to really respect what Will Smith has done. This is also far more thoughtful than I thought this book would be. Will Smith really goes into what his upbringing was and how that's affected him in real life and why he craves the success that he craves. I thought this book was so well done and no it wasn't as good as maybe the Viola Davis memoir but I enjoyed this book and next year I'm going to read Jada's memoir and we're going to see how that goes but I enjoyed Will by Will Smith and it's because I wasn't expecting this book. I don't know what I expected from a Will Smith memoir but this wasn't it and I think this is really really well done and it makes me feel good because of everything that happened this year with uh will and jada people have gone back and like picked this book up because they should this is really really good next book we have bad girl reputation the reason why this is in my most surprising books of the year is because good girl complex by l kennedy is the first book in this series and i gave it five stars even though most people hated it thought it was like one it was on people's worst books of the year but i gave it five out of five stars so i picked up the sequel thinking like okay the fun's over i'm gonna understand why people hate this fucking series like i'm gonna see that this is the trash that it is Pick this book up and baby, I enjoyed this book too. I enjoyed this book too. In this book, we are following a girl who is dating another brother. So I know it's book two, so there's stuff I gotta catch you up on. But there's a set of brothers who live in this ocean town that's by a school. This girl, she also is from this same ocean town, but she has left. She did something really bad and it caused her to have to leave, you know, to get some new scenery. And when she left, she stopped dating one of the boys of the brothers who are in this town and she just ran away. Away. but now she's back and she decided she is going to let go of her bad girl reputation she wants to have a good reputation she wants people to think highly of her but this boy kind of wants her to like be who he knows her to be because he thinks that she's gonna think she's better than him or is it gonna want him if she's on the straight and narrow this book was really good this book, i think the actually the worst part of this book is the romance aspect of this book but this book has so many other things going because if, if you know anything about me i am not here for just romance i am not here for just romance you're gonna have to give me a little bit more than romance and this book did this book gave me more than romance there was other things going on i like the characters in this book i just like being in this world and i know these are like seen as like trashy books but you know what sometimes i like to get a little bit nasty and a little bit fun and that's what this book was and i was not expecting to like this book as much as i did 
The next book that is the most one of the most surprising books of the year is Weather Girl. It's actually surprising that two romance books have made it on this list because I have absolutely hated romance all of this year. I am completely done with romance. I wouldn't say I don't think romance is like an era for me. I always am going to pick up romance books because I enjoy romance books but like I'm not reaching for new romance books. I don't buy romance books. I'm always going to pick up some here or there if I'm hearing people like them but like it's not an act it's not a genre I'm actively trying to get things from because not even that I've read a bunch of bad ones. I just know the romance that's current romance goes through phases I think more than any other genre romance goes through phases and the current romance that we are getting it's just not my taste and I don't have no I'm not knocking it's just not my taste so I have to wait until romance moves into a different type of like direction then I will come back to romance you know so I wait to hear what other people are saying and then I pick up a romance book that's kind of how I'm seeing romance right now but Weather Girl was one I really really enjoyed this year so in this book we're following a girl she is a meteorologist and she has a boss her boss is really mean her boss really doesn't care anything about her and she gets wind that the boss is having a hard time with her man who is another person who works at this like news station and so the sports reporter who is the ball whose boss is the a husband and her boss who is the woman they decide the, the uh, sports reporter and our main character to try to get these two characters to get to get like to get back into each other's good graces so their job can be easier and through that they build a romance i enjoyed this book so much you want to know what i enjoyed the most about this book the main character in this book is described as someone who was fat he's older he's not what people usually uh give heroes and romance books he's not that he doesn't have the physiques the look that people usually give people in romance books and they talk about that in this book they talk about his build and his body how he's insecure about the way that he looks and that's not something I see often in romance but the man being insecure about the way he books looks and the woman having to be like I like you for what you are so I really like that idea because there's some people who like in their relationship, they are the secure one and their male partner is the one who is a secure So I just like that idea. I like that they discussed it. I just thought this book had something deeper than the romance books I had been reading recently. Like I really felt like there was a relationship here that was really, really good. And so this book surprised me because I wasn't expecting to go in here and enjoy a romance book. But I did. But I did. The next book we have, which is on my most surprising books of the year list, is out there by Kate Folk. This is a collection of short stories by Kate Folk. In this, we are in this futuristic post-apocalyptic world and we are getting stories from this world. All of these stories are so good. This book made me think that I might be able to enjoy sci-fi because I don't enjoy fantasy. I've also kind of written off sci-fi but I don't think I should write off sci-fi because if sci-fi is like this I can do it because this book has science fiction elements but there's more to the stories. The stories are like trying to hit on like a moral compass. They're trying to hit on a theme, an idea about humanity that I really enjoyed. And I love trying to see what these books were trying to say about society. All of them were so, 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 so damn good. There's this one story about these people having to like get their like bones like it, it they're they're at like a bone bone place where their bones like crumble or something like that but there's a love triangle there's a love triangle at the root of this and they all do weird strange things to get back at each other this book is so good the last woman on earth is a good story in here the very last book called out there is also really good ah i really enjoyed this i'm surprised this wasn't it this almost made my top 10 favorite books of the year i went back and forth i went back and forth but i couldn't quite do it but definitely my most surprising because i wasn't expecting to enjoy this the way that i enjoyed this the next book, it shows I give and I take it away. Ruth Ware was in my dis most, my worst books of the year list. But she has made my most surprising books of the year list because we have The It Girl. In this book, we are following a main character who just got word that a man she sent to jail for killing her best friend has now died in prison. But the entire time he was in prison, he never was up for parole because he promised that he did not do it. He was not going to claim to have killed this girl because he knows he did not kill this girl. And so it makes our main character think, like, why would he not just admit to it if he actually did it? So it makes her think in her head, maybe she got the details wrong. So she decides she is going to go back 
in time, not actually in time, like go walk down memory lane and see some of the details. Maybe she got something wrong. She feels like she owes it more to herself than this man to figure out what really happened to her friend. There's some interesting relationships going on here. There's some interesting characters going on here. Going back in time to Oxford to see what's going on is also really good. I was expecting to really dislike this book because I know a lot of people didn't like this one from Ruth Ware last year, but I was hooked. I rarely read a book where I'm trying to solve the murder or the t try to find the twist, but I was. I was literally thinking about characters like, where could this character have been at this time, at this time, at this time? And I just thought this was really good. Like, it's really hard to impress me with a mystery, especially one that's this long, but it did. It impressed me. I enjoyed this book. So I was surprised because a lot of people didn't like this book, but I did. The next surprising book we have this book 100%. I actually kind of mad I didn't put this book in my best books of, to, of the year because I enjoyed it. It's one of the books I read earlier this year. Maybe if I read this book later in the year, it would have made it. But, you know, I've had some time to sit with it and maybe that's why I didn't make it. But the lifestyle. This book is sitting at a very low Goodreads rating and I don't know why. And I don't know. I do know why. There's elements of this book. I could see people not liking, but I thought this book was fun. In this book, we are following a high-powered attorney. One day, she goes to visit her husband because she's like, oh, I've been ignoring my husband and, you know, I'm going to go surprise him at work. So she goes to surprise her husband at work and lo and behold, this man is cheating on her. She sees her husband um, having sex with his, like, assistant or something or one of the girls at his law firm because I think he's an attorney too. So he's having sex with one of the assist one of the people at the law firm and she's just like, oh, you're weird. Oh, you're weird. So she's like, we're done. We're getting a divorce. And he's like, no, I don't want to get a divorce. So she's like, we need to work on our marriage. So she gets to talking to another couple and the other this other couple is like, well, you know, we're swingers. So, like, to keep our sex life alive, we have sex with other people. So she decides she is going to become a swinger. Her and her husband are going to become swingers and that starts our story this book is fun this book is fun this book is different this plot is different I don't see why people don't enjoy this book this book has different elements it's talking about you guys know I love a good toxic marriage I love a good toxic marriage and that's what this book had I love women's literature and that's what this book also is like it this is just right up my ass this is a Kenya book I don't know you to know a Kenya book you just gotta know a Kenya book. <laughs> and like, I think if anyone who knew me personally came across this synopsis, they'd be like, here you go, Kenya. Here you go, Kenya. We know you're gonna like this. This is just a Kenya book. And of course it was. I enjoy reading this book this year. The last book. The last surprising book of the year goes to The Bandit Queen. The reason why this has made the list, even though this book was nominated for the Women's Prize and has got a lot of acclaim, is because I have seen on Goodreads so many people DNF this book. So many people DNF this book. And so I thought when I got my hands on it, because I like the synopsis, I was like, I ain't gonna like this book. Because I, believe it or not, I don't really go against the grain. Like most books people like, I also like. Like people who I re like respect. Most times they like a book, I like a book. Most times they don't like a book. I also don't like a book. Like, you know, and so I was expecting not to like this book. So this book is about these women who are in India. They are in loan groups. So there's these people who go around and give loans to women, but they only give the loans to women and you have to be in a group. So these women form loan groups in order to get money for their family. One of the women in the loan group, she does not have a husband because her husband ran away one day and everyone around town says that she killed him and they kind of call her the bandit queen because like the bandit queen is like this, like I, this, the story of this woman who like slays all her enemies and men who do her wrong. So one day, another woman in the loan group, she comes in and is like, so yeah, my husband is beating me. Can we kill him just like you killed your husband? And she's just like, Sure. And that starts our journey of them trying to kill this lady's husband and what happens when everything goes down. This book is so good. This book takes such a serious topic because at the root of this is a story about the violence against Asian women, South Asian women in India by their husbands and people around them and people not caring about them. And it does something so fun with it. So fun with it. So even though it's hitting out all the stuff you want to hear about this, all the important conversations, all the important topics, but it's still having fun. And it's a story about women uplifting one another and coming to each other's aids and women wanting to reclaim their power. This book 
book has almost this cozy mystery element that's done so well. At the end, there's a bunch of hijinks that are all earned. They all feel so good. And I think this book is so well done. When it comes to like taking a bunch of things on the board and bringing them all together, I think this book does that the best of any book I've read this year. I really, really enjoyed this book. That is it. That is my most surprising books of the year. Down below, if you DNF'd any of these books, tell me. And I'm going to tell you down below why you should read these books. And if any book surprised you this year, any books I said I didn't like and you read and was like, Ken, you dare wrong because that book was good, let me know down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.